I, I decided that I really wanted to, to investigate uh, cancer and try to understand the underlying mechanisms with the hope of developing therapeutic strategies for it um, and at least improving the outcome for patients. Um, probably when I was a postdoctoral fellow and I was doing very basic biophysical and structural biology work, which I love and still do in the lab, but I really felt a need for for doing something that was more applicable to society. So I've been funded by the LLS for, for 13 years and it's uh, made a big difference in my career. Early on as a Leukemia Society Scholar, that actually is a salary award. It protects some of my, re my time from teaching for research and allows me to really focus in. And since then I've been fortunate enough to get uh, some of the translational research program grants and, and uh, therapy acceleration program. Um, grants as well and these have made a huge difference in being able to run our clinical trials at all. Okay, so the current projects that the LLS are funding in my lab are really based on, on some uh, factors that we found were, were highly elevated in certain forms of acute myeloid leukemia or AML. Um, we've been funded continuously by the LLS on, on this project for 13 years and um, We've been really trying to focus on finding out ways to inhibit this sort of factor that's gone, gone awry in these AML patients, which is specifically the M4 and M5 uh, subtypes of AML. And by doing these studies, we found a small molecule inhibitor of our factor, which our factor is called EIF4E, and the small molecule inhibitor is called ribavirin. And we were really lucky because ribavirin is a very old antiviral drug. And so when we found it, it meant that um, we could almost immediately go into clinical trial because all of the toxicity issues and all of the drug limitations were already well established. And so that led us into a phase two clinical trial with this sort of uh, group of M4, M5 AML patients who had unfortunately um, had uh, previous treatments that weren't successful and we're now, um, we're now willing to try ribavirin and what was really spectacularly nice for us is not only did we see no toxicities in these patients with the ribavirin treatment which was a simple pill that they could take at home which is in a big contrast to typical chemotherapies which are intensive hospital stays but also that we had not only we had molecular targeting of our of our factor just as we had seen in in the lab but obviously it's a big transition to see things in the lab and then to see them in patients and second of all we even had remissions and blast responses and other forms of clinical response that suggested even this drug alone was able to help these these patients and so what we've been doing now is is a traditional strategy in oncology and that's trying to find what is the best drug to combine with ribavirin so currently in AML there's very limited options for patients um, uh, happily usually the the first rounds of treatment can induce complete remissions in many patients however most of those patients will relapse and the five-year survival for AML stays at 10 to 20 percent for the majority of patients who are over 60 of course there's AML in children there's AML in younger adults as well they fare slightly better, but nonetheless, these relapse um, scenarios are all too common.